Abu Tawfiq now lives on a farm with his three children. He had to move here after Syrian jets destroyed his house. All three have a disorder that stunts their growth. Look at my son, he's 13 but he looks five years old. Tawfiq's cousin Rakan also needs medical care for cerebral palsy. But there are no hospitals nearby. And getting to hospitals in Aleppo has become too dangerous. We used to take him to Aleppo for treatment, but now we cannot because of war. The civil war has nearly crippled Syria's health care system, and what's left is becoming too expensive. I used to buy one growth hormone injection for $20, but it now costs me $100. I have no means to pay for my kids' treatment. Government forces have been accused of targeting hospitals in areas controlled by the rebels. The UN says the Syrian government is using the denial of medical care as a weapon of war. Aid agencies warn that almost half of all medical personnel have left Syria. Activists say dozens of doctors have been tortured to death in government prisons because they treated injured rebels. The shortage of hospitals means people have built these makeshift clinics. This pediatric center looks after eastern parts of Dera province. We perform caesarean sections 24 hours a day and we deal with emergency situations here as well. There is a lack of medical personnel and medicines and equipment. But centers like this are rare. Many field clinics are using old clothes as bandages. Activists say hundreds of children on incubators have died because of frequent power outages. In some places, there are reports that patients were hit on the head to knock them out because there wasn't any anesthetic. The shortage of hospitals and supplies has also meant a rise in cases of polio, meningitis, measles and other preventable diseases among children. And as the war rages on, for many children like Rakan and Tofik, the prospects of a healthier future are bleak. Sama bin Javed, Al Jazeera.